very good morning, CBC Church family. Welcome back to another Sunday of our digital service. I have some good news for you this week. Our CBC uh, group of churches will be resuming its physical service on the 4th of October uh, 2020, or the first week, or the first Sunday of October. Uh, however, even as you resume back our physical services, you will have to follow the SOPs. Um, firstly, meaning to you need to practice uh, physical distancing. You need to uh, wear your mask throughout the service. You need to sanitize your hands uh, before you come in, check your body temperature, and record those details down uh, just in case the church needs to do contact tracing. For those that are unwell uh, with cough, flu or fever or pre-existing medical conditions, you are prohibited from attending the service. Um, seniors above 60 years old and children below 12 are allowed to come but they are not encouraged to do so because these are the high-risk groups. However, for those that are unable to make it, we will still be continuing with our digital service as well and we will provide for you a YouTube link uh, for you to watch. If you have any further questions, uh, please do contact your pastor of your local church or the head of congregation. Thank you. And now, without further ado, uh, let us welcome the CBC worship team, even as they lead us into a wonderful time of powerful, powerful worship uh, with the Lord.
thank you, CBC worship team, for the wonderful time of worship. Now, let us pray for the tithes and offering. Lord Jesus Christ, we continue to thank you for your faithfulness and your blessings during times uh, such as this. We continue to pray and ask, O oh Lord, that whatever money is collected here today will go greatly towards the extension of your kingdom and the glory of your name so that many more people uh, can be helped during this crisis as well as ex accept you as their Lord and Saviour. We continue to pray and ask that you will bless um, the givers uh, even as they sow generously into your kingdom. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let us welcome Senior Pastor Reynong, even as he shares about how the church needs to be uh, a community of faith and how we all need to belong to one for the sake of accountability, encouragement, and mutual support. Okay, good morning, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Uh, I'm glad to be here to share the Word of God with you. Today we are on the topic about cultivating enduring relationship from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. And I want you to know that at the heart of our life lies the relationship that we have with God and uh, with other people, with our family, with our co-workers, with friends that are near and far. And how we cultivate all these relationships had huge impact both in our life and in the life of the people that we care about, the, the life of the people that we uh, work together, that we live with. And I'm sure uh, each of you are looking forward to coming back to a physical church uh, service uh, into the next month. And why do we need to do that? Because we want to feel the warmth of our relationship. We want to hear our brothers and sisters singing songs of praise and worship to, to the Lord. We want to enjoy uh, our brotherly and our sisterly relationship. And that is the heart of relationship. And that's why relationships are the only thing that matter in life. Now, we could have a successful career, money, good physical health, but without supportive, loving relationship, we would be unhappy. And from someone in a solitary confinement in a jail to a senior who is chained alone, in fact, all of life, relationship is the key to health and happiness. And I remember when I was preparing for this sermon, I saw a survey by Harvard Harvard study on adult development. And the conclusion of this survey is that good relationship make us happier and healthier. Social connections are closely linked with longevity, meaning to say how long we live, lower stress level and overall well-being. We can have successful career and all the money in the world, but for a good life, and good health, we need to be socially connected to our family, friend, and the community. And I saw a survey about happiness. How happy are Malaysians between 2012 and 2018? And this survey by Monet University, Malaysia, Dr. Great Lee, among 1,300 Malaysian in Peninsula, Malaysia, in Sabah, in Sarawak, discovered that the percentage of Malaysians who were happy reduced very significantly. 38% from 56.5% in 2012 to 18.43% in 2018. And those who were not very happy increased 9.3% from 3.92% in 2012 to 13.18% in 2018. But the conclusion is, among the age group, the happiest were those between the ages of 18 and 20, and the unhappiest those in the 30 to midlife, and also those between the ages of 
cik 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 Enduring relationship. Okay, shall we all read uh, together? Verse 1. So, when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by our child in Athens. We thank Timothy, who is our brother and co worker in God's service, in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one would be untethered by this trial. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I tend to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labour might have been in vain. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He had told us that you always have pleasant memory of us and you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Now, when you read verse 1 just now, so when we could stand it no longer, we thought it bad to be left by our child in Atten. Now, to do that, we need to understand the background of the Apostle Paul, what had happened to him, and how come he ended up in Aten. So, let's look at Acts uh, chapter 16 and uh, chapter 17. If you look at this map, you can see that this is the journey taken by Paul on his second missionary journey. And verse number 6 tells us, Paul and his companion travelled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. And verse 7, when they came to the border of Mycia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to go in. So they passed by Mycia and went down to Troas. And during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So from Troas, we pull out to sea and sail straight for Tamotri. And the next day, we went to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. And the record went on to tell us, if you look at the timeline, in Philippi, Paul led Lydia and the family to the Lord. And subsequently, Paul and Silas delivered a slave girl from demonic possession. And because the owner lost their trade, the trade girl could not anymore perform property for them. There was an uproar and there was a riot, so Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. And in prison, they were beaten, they were treated very badly, and a miracle happened. Midnight, while Paul and Silas were worshipping God, there was an earthquake. Paul and Silas became, uh, were set free, and they led the jailer and his household to the Lord. And then they gathered in Lydia, but because of the uproar, Paul and Silas went on to Thessalonica to preach the gospel there. In Thessalonica, a mob arose and caused trouble and so Paul and Silas were sent to Berea. In Berea, the same thing happened. But this time, Timothy and Silas were told to stay in Berea and Paul was 
stand alone to Athens. Okay, so with that background, in Acts chapter 17, verse 10 to 15, we read that as soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. And on arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scripture every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed and did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. But when the Jew in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea, some of them went there to agitating the crowd and stirring them up. So the believers immediately sent Paul to the court, but Silas and Timothy stayed at Berea. And those who escorted Paul brought him to Athens and then left with instruction for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Okay? And when Paul was in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of either. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both the Jew and the God-fearing Greek, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. And what happened was a group of Greek philosophers began to debate with him. And some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seemed to be advocating foreign God. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and his resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, that is the forum, where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears and we like to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who live there they spend their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest idea. Okay, and so Paul stood in the midst of them and preached a magnificent sermon about the unknown God. And he concluded his sermon by saying to them, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walk around, look carefully at your object of worship. I even found an altar with this encryption to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temple built by human hand. And he is not served by human hand as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gave everyone life and bread and everything else. For one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole world and he marked out their appointed time in history and the boundary of their land. And God did, God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offering. Therefore, since we are God's offering, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone and emit made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked it ignorant, but now He commands all people everywhere to repent, for He has set a day where He will judge the world with justice. By the man He had appointed, He had given proof of this to everyone by raising Him from the dead, and this man is Jesus Christ. And so, we come to 1 Timothy and chapter 3 just now, in verse 1, Paul said, I was left alone in Athens. And you can see the 
trouble, the persecution, the trial, the ministry Paul had been performing from Philippi to Thessalonica to Berea and now in Athens. So therefore, to cultivate enduring relationship, we must be in an accountable accountable relationship. And I use the acronym GMO. We God, we are mentor, we others. Okay, so why do I use the word GMO? Because GMO stands for genetically modified organism or food. So genetically modified organism can be defined as organism like plant or animal or microorganism in which the genetic material, the DNA has been altered in a way that does not occur naturally by mating or reproduction and or natural recombination. Okay, so GMO we got, we are mentor, we are. Shall we pray? Lord, we come to your word and we invite your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and our senior partner as we learn how to cultivate enduring relationship with you, with our mentor, with our spiritual leader, and also with our family, with others around us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, firstly, to cultivate enduring relationship, we need to build a strong relationship with God. Now, in First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, just now, Paul chose to be left alone in Athens so that Timothy could return to Thessalonica and establish the believers. And the word translated left uh, means uh, to leave loved one at that. That means to leave loved one in our bereavement. So Paul, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17, he told them, brothers and sisters, when we were often by being separated from you for a short time, in person, not in talk, out of that intense longing, we make every effort to see you. You can see the heart of the Apostle Paul. He shared with the Thessalonian church his deep, intense feeling for them. He felt open. And the Greek word can also mean bereaved. So, to leave these new believers was like an experience of bereavement for Paul. And Paul, he agonized over his separation from the Thessalonian Christian. Paul so loved the Thessalonian Christian that he would even risk his own life to return to them. He also so loved the Christian at Philippi that he was willing to stay out of heaven in order to encourage them. And to the Corinthian Christian, he said, I will be gladly spent and be spent for you. I would have gladly given away my life and my resources for you. But now Paul was left alone in heaven. So Paul had to look to the Lord and to his word. And you will know that it will be in that time that Paul spent with the Lord that he wrote many letters to the churches he had established in his capacity uh, as an apostle, as a pastor, as an evangelist, as a spiritual father who loved them wholeheartedly. And very interestingly, it will be on Paul's second missionary journey from the city of Corinth that he will be writing first and second Thessalonians to the Thessalonica Christians. He also wrote the letter to the Galatians. And in his third missionary journey, he wrote first and second Corinthians to the church at Corinth. It will be in those times when Paul was left alone that he looked to the Lord to draw his strength, his resources, and all his partners. It will be in those times, in that place of intimacy with the Lord, that Paul began to receive from the Holy Spirit to write 
those letters to the different churches that he had established. Okay, and therefore, this morning, I want to report here some of my questions from the evening devotion theory. And I felt that this is what we must do in this current season under the RMTO to curb the, 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 the spread of the coronavirus. And my thought here is at some point this crisis is going to end. And the question for all of us is, do we really want to go back to the way things were to say spiritually or what if we spend the time in such a way we emerge from this RMTO with unprecedented biblical literacy what if our increased solidity was used for increased intimacy in prayer and dependent on the Holy Spirit or what if this change of faith was a gift to us church leaders pastors parents Christ's disciples to go deep and drink from Christ the everlasting fountain and be like tree planted by the water that sends out its root by the stream. It does not fear when it comes. Its leaves are always green. It had no worry in a year of drought and never failed to bear fruit. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 8. Okay, so dearly beloved, to cultivate enduring relationship, first remember the first acronym G with God, second M with a mentor. Now, why do I say that? You look carefully in verse 2. Uh, Luke the author, uh, sorry, Paul the author of first. Thessalonians, he said, we send Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service, in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith. And, of course, Timothy was the ideal man to send to the church to help them to stand firm. And Timothy entitled were Paul, white hand man, so to say, whom he used as troubleshooter whenever the church had problem, And so Paul sent Timothy to Corinth to help to straighten out the problem there. In fact, he also planned to send Timothy to the believers in Philippi. But in verse 2 here of First Thessalonians chapter 3, Paul said, we send Timothy. And look carefully here. There are three very important descriptions about Timothy. First, you see the word brother. Timothy, our brother. He was a Christ follower. Meaning to say Timothy is a Christian. Now, the important point here is we cannot lead another where we have not been there ourselves. Nor can we share what we do not project. So, Paul had led Timothy to faith in Christ many years before. And so Timothy was his, so to say, his spiritual son, his disciple. And the second thing you notice about Timothy, Paul mentioned here, Timothy who is our co-worker. Now the word co-worker, translated from the original Greek is a servant. They are cornered. And it's from here we get the English word, deacon. So Timothy was Paul's servant. Timothy was Christ's minister. He was Christ's servant, sent out to serve the local churches. And another important thing here you can see from this word, Timothy, our co-worker, meaning Timothy was a team man. Timothy was God's co-worker. Co-worker with God. It was God who worked in Timothy and through Timothy to accomplish his work. And not only Timothy was co-worker with God, working with God, Timothy was also co-worker with other disciples. 
first and foremost, Timothy submit himself to his mentor, Paul, obeyed him. And when he was sent to Thessalonica, he obeyed Paul and he went there and he returned to Paul in Corinth with news about the Thessalonian church. So, very importantly here, you notice Paul wrote about Timothy. I hope in the Lord Jesus Christ to send Timothy to you too, that I also may be shared when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. So you see, Paul and Timothy relationship as spiritual father and spiritual son, as mentor and mentor, as disciple and disciple. Therefore, to calculate enduring relationship, not only we must have a strong relationship with God, so that in difficult time, that faith in God will help us to stand on strong ground, but also we must be in an accountable relationship with our mentor for spiritual support and counsel. But finally, very important, we need to be in a spiritual family. So, the third acronym is we are the, Look at verse 3 to verse 5. Paul told the Thessalonian so that no one will be untethered by this trial. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. Meaning to say, Paul say, trial and persecution are going to be a natural part of our everyday Christian life. In fact, when we were with you, Paul said, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And look, it turned out that way, as you well know. So look again. Let's look again at what Paul went through prior to his arrival at Athens. Remember I told you in Philippi, Paul and Silas were attacked by people. They were stripped. They were beaten with rocks. By the magistrate, they were severely flogged and their feet were fastened in the top, in the prison. And in Thessalonica, a mob rioted, caused trouble to Christian there. And Paul and Silas were taken to Maria. In Maria, a mob stirred trouble and Paul was sent to Athens. So, Paul said that, the trial and the testing that come to him and to his teammates are not accident. They are God appointment. Therefore, we must expect to suffer for his sake. Because Jesus reminds us, he said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it already hated him. Persecution, therefore, is not foreign to the Believer, but a normal part of the Christian life. In fact, Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, reminded Timothy, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And to Paul said, Look, I had repeatedly told you while I was with you. Secondly, we must also remember that we are in spiritual warfare. First John chapter 5, verse Lighting tells us the whole world lies under the control of the evil one. And therefore, Satan is the enemy of Christians and he seeks to ruin our faith. So 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9, Peter told the believers, reject him. Why? So that we can stand firm in the faith. And you remember when Satan tempted Eve? How does Satan began his warfare. He began by weakening her faith in God. He asked if did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? You think God is so fair to you, Eve? Don't you know that God is trying to hide something from you? Ah, so Satan began by weakening her faith in God. 
And so I would say as a serpent, Satan will deceive. As a lion, he will devour. So Satan will use any means to attack the Christian and weaken his faith in God. So he told the Thessalonian Christian to reject him, to stand firm in their faith. And in verse 5, he said, for this reason, when I could stand it no longer, when I want to know more about you, when I wanted to really know what is happening to you. Why? Because Paul said, I was afraid that in some way the tempter, the devil, Satan, had tempted you and that our labor might have been in vain. So I sent Timothy, and Timothy's task was to establish you, to encourage you, to comfort you in your faith. Why? Because it will be our faith in God that will keep our feet on the ground in time of affliction. First John chapter 5, verse 4, we might us, this is the victory that had overcome the world, even our faith. So we need a spiritual family for spiritual support and encouragement. Yet remember God gave each one of us as an individual. Of course, we must all come to God through our personal faith. But once we enter into our relationship with Him, we immediately become a part of His family. And in every family, in every marriage, in every relationship, it is going to be a refining process. It is an opportunity to, to be refined by God into the person He wanted to be. Amen. Okay, and so finally in verse 6, Paul was very happy. Why? Because he wrote here, he said, look, Timothy has now come back to me from you and has brought to me good news about your faith and love. And he had told us that you always had pleasant memory, can I use the word, fond memory, loving memory, memory of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Amen. Praise the Lord for Paul, great labor of love and Timothy and Silas commitment to establish the Christian and the new prophet to Paul was the Thessalonian Christian was standing strong in their faith. So to end my sermon today, if we want to live in a community of faith, we have to cultivate enduring relationship. First, we got and Paul told the people at Athens, in him, in God, we live and move and exist. Not only we God, because God is invisible, we need to have a real personal relationship with a mentor. For accountability, for counsel, it could be your spiritual leader, it could be your pastor or your cell leader, it could be your colleague in your workplace, it could be a fellow Christian. Yes, for accountability and counsel, but we cannot be on our own. We must have the support of one another. So we need to be in a spiritual family for mutual support and encouragement to mobilize support to other people. And yes, very beautifully for body evangelism and mission. So remember GMO, tell your neighbor, GMO, amen. G for we God, M for we a mentor, O for we other people. So we need to be a part of the spiritual family. And I trust that today, if you are not a part of the spiritual family, you are just floating in and out, or you are not a part of a small group, may I encourage you that when we place our faith in Christ, God became our Father. And we become His children. And other believers become our brothers and sisters. And the church become our spiritual family. May God help us. And for those, if you are first time here today, and you say, yes, 
I also want to be a part of this spiritual family, but I don't know how. I see the beauty of a spiritual family. I see the beauty of a small group. May I encourage you? I can show you how you can be a part of this spiritual family. But you need to take a personal step of faith, a personal commitment. The Bible tells us we can be made right with God by having our sin forgiven through Jesus who died on the cross to forgive our sin. Okay, and the Bible also tells us we have to act on our belief in what Jesus did for us at the cross. We need to confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead and we will be saved. Our confession concerning Jesus Christ is a matter of life and death. And this is the only confession that can save us. Jesus is Lord from a heart that truly believes in him. And so today, if you are here, with us on this online church and you say, I want to be a part of this spiritual family, then may I invite you? We can receive Christ by faith, for by grace we have been saved through faith and that is not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not a result of our own word. Amen. And so we can do that by praying a prayer to invite Jesus Christ into your life. And the prayer is Something like this. May I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and thank you for forgiving my sin and giving me eternal life. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Take control of the throne of my life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be in Jesus' name. Amen. If you made this prayer today, you are a child of God. And the Bible says you are a part of God's family and God is your heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Abba Father, we thank you for the privilege today that we can be a part of your spiritual family because we acknowledge you, our God, our heavenly Father. And together we pray you will continue to take us deeper into you. And in that place of intimacy, in that place of communion with you, we pray you will continue to help us to grow our faith and the foundation and the substance of our Christian life. In that place of unity and oneness and communion with you, may you help us to draw the and the provision for our life. But we also acknowledge that we cannot be alone in the building of our Christian faith. We want to be connected with others in the spiritual family. We also want to be accountable to a spiritual mentor or a spiritual father or to someone who is walking ahead of us for spiritual counsel, for spiritual support and for encouragement. So, Abba Father, we pray may you continue uh, to refresh our heart and renew our passion for you even as we prepare to go back to the church for our physical service. May you help us to build enduring relationship with our family, with others, but most of all with you. We pray your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I have three questions for your small group discussion. Share with one another an important attribute that is the trend of your married relationship or family relationship. What are the trends of this small group and what are our witnesses? Question two will be an enduring relationship is not formed in good time. It's formed in the fire of affliction and trial. So share with your group an important lesson you have learned. And finally, question number three. Of the three points you have learned today, which one you would need to work on? With God, with a mentor, or with others? Tell your neighbor, GMO. Amen. Speak.
speak life into my soul. Who can spin the world around and hold me ever close? And who can search the depths of me? Love me to the core And who controls the world I see And walks me through it all No you 
just sing now. No one, no one, no one, no one, no one, no one but you. One more time now. No one, no one, no one, no one, no one, no one but you. One last time now. No one, no one, no one, no one, no one, no one, no one but you. Now sing of your love. I can't get enough. I just want you. The Lord of my soul, the King of my heart, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Enoch, for that encouraging word today. Uh, for those of you that may have missed out uh, our initial announcement regarding the reopening of our uh, physical uh, services, uh, please take note that our CBC group of churches will be reopening um, on the 4th of October 2020. If you have any further questions, please do talk to your pastor or the head of congregation of your local church. Also, if you just want to review again um, the instructions uh, and the details, you can also watch the beginning of this service using the YouTube link. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you and have a blessed week ahead.